tent and it was amazing. Oh my gosh. So cool. Hey, we're, we're the fauna fetchers. fetchers and guess what? We're in the land where the soil is red, the tourists come in coach lows, and this rock that we're near makes Dwayne Johnson look like a pebble. Have a look at her. We're at Uluru. Oh, God, never gonna get used to that. <laughs> Alright, g'day guys. We're the fauna fetchers. Now on this trip, we're gonna be exploring the middle of the island we call home. Now the red center is home to Uluru, one of the most iconic land formations in Australia. And look, you do not understand the sheer size and beauty of the rock until you're right up close to her. Now on this trip, we're not only gonna be looking at the rock, we're gonna be looking for as much wildlife as we can, during the day, during the night, under every bit of bush we can. So, I hope you enjoy and come along and see what we found. Oh, hey guys, all right, so we just come back from Uluru today. We've given this guy a hand off the road because as you can see, he actually doesn't have any hands or feet. Now, I know what you're saying. He's not a snake, even though I like to call snakes tails with faces on them, but this guy is actually a legless lizard. Now, there's a few ways to tell in between snakes and legless lizards because obviously it's a little bit confusing. This guy does actually have a little bit of a flap as a feet. Poor fella, what can you do? Now, one thing about lizards is that they do have external ear holes, all right? So if you were to come in close, you can actually see a hole in, their, in the side of their face where they can hear external noises, all right? Another thing is that most lizards actually have fleshy tongues, just like us, except for these sneaky monitors and goannas, all right? There's a couple ways that you can tell in between a snake and a legless lizard. What a ripper he is. See you later, little buddy. Another reptile, have a look at this guy. He's only small, this is a gecko. Now we're not too sure of the common name, nor are we sure if he has a common name, because there's a lot of different species out here. He has quite the little Velcro-like little paws here, and his eyelids are incredible. If you have a close up of that, they're super cool. He's got this spiny tail, and he's actually releasing this nice sticky stuff that's probably trying to tell me to get lost here off his back, <laughs> which I've never witnessed before. See his back as well. And he's a nice little yellow tail. Now we found him on the road, another thing to look out for. And he was probably hunting these moths you can see flying around. Like everything else we catch, we're gonna let him go. So let's see if he goes fast. Look at that, look at him. Look at that tail lifting up. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a cool character to him, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, okay. Why is it different from that? On top. Oh, don't lose his tail. I've got him. Just wait until I can't wait to pass. Oh, get him! Get him! On top! Yes! Hey Wiz, we've just found another gecko on the road finding some food. He's the second one for the night and it just goes to show how many reptiles we have in Australia, no matter where you are. Now it's time to get going because we're gonna try and find some more. <laughs> hey, alrighty guys, this is our third gecko for the night. Now with this guy, what I want to talk about is his camouflage. Now, obviously, 
all different reptiles have all different sorts of camouflage but this fellow look at the, the comparison between him and the dirt here you can imagine him nicely camouflage in that dirt there waiting for that prey to fly around him also avoiding any sort of predators catching him all right what a cool little bloke he is we'll let him go now so i can't see him again all right let's do it I can hardly see him. Oh, he's like lightning as well. <laughs> All right guys, so look what's around me, bugs. You know what bugs do? They play the, a vital part in our ecosystem. All right, they are the food source for so many fauna in this area. Yes, they're annoying. Yes, they fly in my mouth. Yes, they get in the car. Gee whiz, but you know what? They are at the bottom and they make everything else possible. Pretty awesome. <laughs> Whoa. All right, all right, all right, have a look at this. Okay, we got him. Very exciting. This is one of the snakes we've been looking for while we've been here in Uluru, okay? We've been driving on the roads at night. This is when you're gonna mainly see them. They're very populated in this area. This is a juvenile mulga snake, okay? Very cool little snake indeed. And they are very venomous. I'm talking number 17 in the world, okay? Top 20. Okay, they're uh, quite a large venomous snake here in Australia. They get about three meters long, okay? And they get really thick. They're one of our thickest snakes in Australia. Now these guys were commonly known as our King Brown, but they're actually more closely related or in our black snake family. So if we get bitten by this bloke, we would receive black snake anti -venine. I Look at the speed of this guy. Look at him go. of the old rock. Stunner. And look at this beauty. Not you. Oh, yeah. These are the oldest. Translating to many heads. I can see why they call it that. Now this is why you'd come to this part of Australia. It's a beautiful spot to visit. But before you do come, a few tips. Always bring water and stay on the marked tracks. We got to respect the indigenous uh, Aboriginals of this land. Also look out for wildlife on the roads. They have a part to play in the ecosystem and we should care for our wildlife. One more thing, definitely bring a bloomin' fly net. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Be a next time trip on the list, yeah. <laughs> desert you wouldn't think there's this many animals out here there's reptiles mammals marsupials a lot of animals yeah and this gorge definitely provides some shelter some tucker and that much needed h2o definitely i feel really small here that's because you're tiny but you're the same size as me come on let's find some animals let's do it you know what creature i haven't seen any wild frumpies yet no i haven't i, I reckon if we saw some the place would be a lot more stabilized <laughs> Oh. All right, so during the trip, we were looking for one particular reptile, and this animal is super iconic to Australia's outback. This was the thorny devil. Now we did a lot of searching around earlier in Alice Springs for the particular animal, ouch. And uh, look, we didn't find him, okay? Not always is a fauna fetch successful, but you know, in future years when we come back here, we'll definitely still be looking for him. We did find some in captivity though, so I'll definitely show some footage of that. 
but I just want to talk about them. They're super cool little reptiles. They're only about this big. And actually, in the first week of February, it's their hatching season. So if you do come around that set time of year, be careful for tiny little thorny devils. Now, no one thorny de devil coloration is the same. It's like an individual fingerprint. And they adapt well to live in such a harsh environment. As you can see, there's salt lakes behind me. And guess what? Each meal comprises of about 5,000 ants. So they eat about 15,000 ants a day. That's a pretty crazy amount of ants. Pretty yucky smelly as well. But anyway, and also they have two knobs on the back of their neck and that's to warn predators off. It's a defense mechanism. So when they see a predator in the sky or near them, they'll put their head down and hopefully that will take the brood off the attack rather than their face. So it's pretty cool. And uh, all those spikes, it's not just to defense or help with uh, camouflage. It actually helps collect water. Okay, so more surface area. So there's a few facts about the thorny devil. And again, I'll show you some footage and I'm gonna go and pick these bloody spikes out of my hands. It's like I just touched a thorny devil. All right. Warning, the following images may be graphic to some people. Viewer discretion is advised. It was so sad to see so much of our native wildlife killed on the roads surrounding Uluru. And I think we should all take this as a wake up call. So whether you're driving around on our local roads or you're on a holiday or you're just simply passing through an area. Slow down, look out for our wildlife and take some responsibility. If you see an injured animal on the road, call the right people that can help. So this is a big old rock up close. Isn't it awesome? Fantastic. Now, doing the research, because we've been here, my favorite fun fact about this rock is that it stands 348 meters above the ground. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, literally. It actually goes 2.5 k's underneath the soil. There's that again. That's pretty cool. You know what, Bridge? I reckon this is how Australia got their obsession with big things. You know, think about it. We've got the big prawn down our way, or up our way. We've got the big banana. They're thinking about putting a big Milo tin somewhere. And in the center of Australia, we've got the big rock. So it's Uru from Uluru. We're the fauna fetchers and we're literally flying out. Alright, so if you are driving from Alice Springs to Uluru, it's a big drive, about five hours, but super cool. Lots of animals on the road, of course, watch out. But you'll come through some cool little landscapes, okay? Make sure you stop and have a look, okay? You're only here every now and then, of course. And as Sophie thought when we first drove past this, this is Uluru, but it's actually not. It's Mount Connors, just to let you know. Okay? You thought that? No, that I was not. not me. I said it was not Uluru. Again, Mount Connors, not Uluru.